The NCAA Basketball Championship is an exclusive presentation of CBS Sports. Tonight, the bright lights of Broadway shine on the rainy Meadowlands as the NCAA Championships take center stage. Three weeks ago, 64 lined up for the casting call, but only two won leading roles, Syracuse and Kentucky. Well, the air is charged with the electricity of an opening night. When the curtain falls, a new national champion will be crowned, and you, my friend, have the orchestra seats front and center right here on CBS. Good evening, everybody. I'm Pat O'Brien. Welcome to a prelude to a championship. You know, Syracuse is seeking its first national championship. Kentucky is going for its sixth trophy, and the tip time is 9.22. And on this April Fool's night, the Wildcats are heavily favored, but the underdog Orangemen are looking to fool the experts, much like that Villanova Wildcat squad did on April 1st, 11 years ago today. To pull off an upset, Syracuse will look to forward John Wallace, who passed up the NBA, to stay for his senior season. Wallace scored a game-high 21 points in the national semifinal to lead the Orangemen to a victory against Mississippi State Saturday. As for Kentucky, senior guard Tony Delk will lead the Wildcats charge. He posted 20 points against UMass on Saturday night. And joining us now is our own Dr. Quinn basketball man, <laughs> Quinn Buckter. And you've got a trophy like this back at your old school. What's it like for a player? Here you are, right? This, this moment is about the players. Do you believe you have a chance to win? And I'm Syracuse. I've got to believe if I can have my season-low turnovers as I did against Mississippi State, force Kentucky to shoot less than 40 percent, we got a chance to be the national champions. That's worth playing for. Ready to go. This is fun, isn't This it? is where time to go. <laughs> time to go. The Orangemen are getting set for tonight's championship game. Their coach, Jim Beheim is seeking his first title. A short time ago, Andrea Joy spoke with him. 
Coach, it seems your players are the only people who are not surprised they're playing in the championship game. As we get closer to game time, how would you describe their emotional state? Same way it's been all the way through. They're not surprised, and they're, they're really the only ones that matter. It doesn't matter what everybody else does. It's just the people that go out there with the sneakers on, and uh, we're ready to play, and we're going to give a good account of ourselves tonight. Eleven years ago, you actually picked Villanova to upset Georgetown. Do you sense that this team maybe has some of that Nova magic? Well, that was a magical game, an unbelievable game, but that year Nova had played them close, so there was some indication that that could happen. Uh, but uh, this team is ready to play. We know we're playing a great team. We know we have to play well, uh, and uh, we're ready for that. All right, Coach, thanks so much. Good luck. He's loose on the other bench. Kentucky coach Rich Patino is also looking for his first crown. Patino has a special relationship with Bayheim. He worked with him as an assistant at Syracuse from 1976 to 78. Earlier this evening, Michelle Tafoya caught up with Patino. Your team comes in tonight heavily favored. What's the challenge for you as a coach tonight to keep this team grounded? Well, we're playing a team that beat Kansas, beat Georgia, who we had two rough games with, beat Mississippi State, who we lost to. So we don't look at point spreads. We look at how good our opponent is, and this is a terrific opponent. You're certainly aware that fans are not only expecting or waiting to see if Kentucky wins its championship, but to see if Rick Pitino, the coach, wins his first NCAA championship. How tough has it been to deal with those expectations? Well, I don't worry about myself. I, I would like to live it up for the team because this team is a beautiful uh, group of young people who have worked very hard to get to this point, but it's not going to be expectations that win. It's going to be offensive and defensive execution. Good luck, Coach. Thanks. Thank you. I don't know. You tried to read all kinds of things into those facial expressions. What do you say? Well, I see one one thing for sure. Rick Pitino has to win a national championship. That's what everybody tells him. His team feeds off of that kind of energy. You would be concerned. Jim Beheim, on the other hand, no one expecting him to be here. So he's relaxed, and he's got to translate that energy to his team. All right, coming up, we'll speak with a pair of coaches who have taken their teams to championships. But tonight, I'll be watching from <laughs> the stands. Duke Coke, Mike, Sh <laughs> Mike Krzyzewski, <laughs> and UCLA coach Jim Herrick when prelude to a championship continues. <laughs> yes, they did. CBS Sports presentation of Prelude to a Championship is sponsored by Honda, who offers an impressive family of cars, sport, utility vehicles, and minivans. The Kentucky Wildcats a short time ago. Rick Pitino looked so serious, but there they were in the hallway getting ready to go on to the biggest game of their lives, and they look ready. Right. You're looking live. They look ready, too, at the festivities in the Carrier Dome in Syracuse and in Lexington, Kentucky, where the round ball rooters have gathered to support their teams. Hello, folks. Keep waving. <laughs> Joining us now are Jim Harry, coach of last year's national champion UCLA Bruins, and Mike Krzyzewski, winner of back-to-back -back trophies, 91 and 92 with Duke. I'm playing a little hurt tonight, but I figure with you great coaches, you can get me through this, right? Welcome. Nice Thank to sir. see you here. Let's talk about Syracuse first. And everybody's talked about this 2-3 zone all weekend long. Can they, can they win with this thing? The 2-3 zone tries to keep it, the ball outside. Uh, it's very active. You have to move the ball. Two men across the top, three along the baseline, a 2-3 zone. You have to reverse the ball, screen the zone. They reverse it here. Here they screen the zone. Uh, the backside, John Wallace comes up and stops that. Otis Hill will help him in the corner. They get a little double team. They're real quick. Watch how they get back out and stop the shot right here. Uh, makes them uh, reverse the ball again. He takes a dribble, which helps the zone relocate. They throw a cross-court skip pass, and Otis Hill steps in and gets a steal. A very big, strong, long, lean, active zone. And on paper and on Telestrator, it looks great, but Kentucky has so much pressure. You want to... I don't know what you can do out there sometimes with those guys coming at you. Well, what you want to do, Pat, and what Kentucky wants to do is put constant pressure on you, both offensively and defensively. Against UMass, watch the UMass player that we have circled score, and then watch how quickly Kentucky inbounds the basketball. They want to take up a lot of space. Kentucky, uh, the UMass players have a hard time seeing the ball. They advance, Kentucky advances the ball with a pass 30 feet to Ron Mercer. Mercer shot fakes and goes past an unset UMass defense. Right away, Kentucky puts pressure on the ball. Right away, they're, they're putting pressure on the ball. The ball goes out of bounds, and that's what they're going to try to do against Syracuse tonight, put constant pressure offensively and defensively. Which is going to work, Quinn? Well, I, here's what it's about. Kentucky has, in my opinion, the best 11 athletes and combination basketball players ever assembled. It's that quickness that they got to take advantage of so they can get themselves a national championship. 
By the way, I know two people who wish they were down there. Absolutely. <laughs> you can worry about up here. <laughs> Prelude to a championship will continue in a moment. Stay with us. Welcome back to Prelude to a Championship. I'm Pat O'Brien. If you're a college basketball fan, folks, it does not get any better than this. Let's send you down to courtside where Jim Nance and Billy Packer had the best seats in the house. And now, so do you, Jimmy. Thank you, Pat. And Billy, five and a half Jimmy months Greg. ago today, every basketball player in the country opened up practice with one goal to make the journey to New Jersey to stand on this floor in the national championship game. And now it's down to Syracuse and Kentucky. Let's talk about the Cinderella element, though, because you've stood on this floor before and stood witness to the David Goliath matchups of NC State back in 83, the win over Houston, the one 11 years ago tonight when Villanova won in Lexington, Kentucky, and then in 88, Danny Manning in Kansas at Kemper Arena. If, if Syracuse was to pull off the unimaginable tonight, where would that one rank? Well, Jim, right up there. I think that you have to look at them as a, as a team of destiny, just like those teams were. And had I not experienced those three games right here on a floor like this, I would say no chance. But having experienced it, anything can happen, and that's what we're here to watch. All right, the road to the final for these two teams. First off, the Kentucky Wildcats through the Midwest with an opening round win against San Jose State, then Virginia Tech, Utah, and Wake Forest. Finally, UMass knocked out on Saturday in the national semifinals. For Syracuse out west, Montana State, and then Drexel in the second round. On to the regional, the thriller of this tournament so far, the win against Georgia, Kansas in the regional final, and Mississippi State on Saturday. So 62 games have been contested in this year's tournament. Only one game remains. Syracuse and Kentucky coming up next. CBS Sports exclusive coverage of the NCAA National Championship game is sponsored by Pontiac. Bud Light. Cellular One. And by UPS. Welcome back to the New Jersey Meadowlands. Time for the starting lineups, and we turn it over to Mr. Frank Fallon. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to the Meadowlands for tonight's NCAA National Championship game between the Syracuse Orange Men and the Kentucky Wildcats. And now let's meet the starting lineups. For Syracuse at forward, a 6'7 sophomore from Detroit, Michigan, number 30, Todd Bergen. For Kentucky at forward, a 6'4 junior from Louisville, Kentucky, number 23, Derek Anderson. For Syracuse at forward, a 6'8 senior from Rochester, New York, number 44, John Wallace. For Kentucky at forward, a 6'8 sophomore from Chicago, Illinois, number 24, Antoine Walker. For Syracuse at center, a 6'8 junior from White Plains, New York, number 4, Otis Hill. For Kentucky at forward, a 6'10 senior from Evansville, Indiana, number 40, Walter McCarty. For Syracuse at guard, a 6'7 junior from Woodland, New York, number 35, Jason Sapola. For Kentucky at guard, a 6'1 senior from Brownsville, Tennessee, numbers double zero, Tony Dell. For Syracuse at guard, a 6'4 senior from Syracuse, New York, number three, Lazara Sims. And for Kentucky at guard, a 6'2 junior from Lebanon, Kentucky, number 25, Anthony Epps. And the coaches for Syracuse in his 20th season, Jim Beheim. For Kentucky in his seventh season, Rick Patino. 
Professor Packer. It's time for your game analysis, things to watch in this championship game. Boy, so many tonight, Jim, but we're going to lead off with a couple that get you the heat of the night, and that's the Kentucky Press. Can Syracuse withstand this pressure from so many different angles? Sims is the key man here. The Dazzling Dozen. Jim, somebody's got to give a name to this Kentucky team. You know, they've had rough scrunts, and they've had the Fab Five. I'm going to give them the Dazzling Dozen because that bench scoring in minutes is so important to Kentucky. The third thing coming up, the meat hook. I'm talking about Dimitri Hill, not Otis Hill. He had 29 points and 10 rebounds against this Kentucky team. They're very similar in style. Can Otis duplicate that performance? It's important inside. And loose as a goose. Now that's the difference in the mental philosophy of these two teams. Syracuse, extremely loose. Kentucky is likewise. But I think if Syracuse can stay in this game as long as possible, maybe that ultimate pressure will finally phase Kentucky. So far, they've shown no signs of it. But if this game is tight down the wire, believe me, they'll start thinking about it. Rick Patino's first championship game. Jim Beheim's second. He was there in 87, only to fall to a Keith Smart shot at the buzzer. I'll make the prediction, Jim. This will not be their last national championship game. John Clockerty, Scott Thornley, David Libby draw the choice assignment. Wallace has been getting every tip on people. Still got it. Oh, oh, nice touch by Wallace. Kentucky ball. Right off his foot. We had two beautifully officiated games Saturday. Let's hope these guys have as good a success. And there's the 2-3 zone, Jim. Walker in the middle is the answer. He'll take the turnaround and come up shy right away. Syracuse ball. This 2-3 zone vaunted during the NCAA tournament. And Jim, you're going to see Kentucky start inside and work out, as opposed to what Mississippi State did Saturday. So Paul has passed, deflected, but back to him. Here's Hill. They'll double him up. What a first half he had Saturday. What a tournament he's had. He's been outstanding. Ahead the Delt. Could have been no steps. travel. No travel. That pass, though, into the arms of Beheim. Well, he almost made it to a Final Four in 66 as a player with Dave Bing. Got knocked off by Duke. Pretty good catch by a man who had a great senior year. He came to Syracuse to Bayheim as a walk-on, left as a co-captain with Bing. And 30 years ago, they lost to Duke in the East Final to get to the Final Four. Now here, Walker on Wallace. Wallace really can handle the ball in the open court. Probably be the secondary ball handler for this team. Sims, obviously, the primary guy on Dell. Wallace steps in. Travel. He's might looking around. What? Might have been a little makeup. He traveled the first time and it was missed, so he got caught on the second. He thought maybe he was heading to the free throw line. These teams played last year at Rupp Arena. Kentucky won 77 71 in an error marred game. Walker baseliner. And Sims with the board. Syracuse racing into the front court. Anderson doing a lot of hand checking. Reach it in. Anderson. Billy, when these two played last year, phenomenal number of turnovers in that game. Again, only a six-point win by Kentucky on its home floor, forcing 33 Syracuse turnovers. Syracuse hasn't had that many in a game since. And for that matter, Kentucky had 25 turnovers. They haven't matched that since. Wallace gets it back, though. There you go. John Wallace gets the game's first bucket. Now there's the power, the combination of Wallace and Hill. If Kentucky does have a, a weakness. It's an interior strength. Out to Sapola. And Kentucky with a shaky start. Misfiring. That Sims must have eyes in the back of his head. You know, a lot of guys chase him down, but he always seems to get by him. Another traveling call on the Orangeman. Here, Wallace on the inside, excellent move, got by with a little swim stroke there, gets it back, nobody going on the boards to check him out, he's too strong a player to let have his way inside. Mark Pope has come in for Kentucky. Rick Pitino right away says, I need a little bit more weight down in low against those two fellows. So, got Walker, who's missed a couple of shots. That extra pass by Kentucky, so important. 
Matching up out front. Epps stepped in and dished out. Delt three, rattles it in. Bergen went right for Delk's waist, but shows the concentration that Delk has on the shot. He kept his eye right on target. Terrific shooter. The Sims uses his wide body, too, as a dribbler, Jim. Constantly keeping his body between himself and the man gardening. Bergen drives, then dishes, and a turnover. Remember, Syracuse on Saturday committed only five for the game, and two of them were in the last minute. They've but, already had three here, Billy, in the game's first two and a half. Well, consider the opponent as well. Kentucky will turn it over. They can turn it over constantly. Now, they're not putting a man on the foul line like they had with Walker at the start of the game. Something I'm expecting them to deploy early. Eric Anderson missing. Ball tipped around back to Epps, who will reset. Now, Syracuse not a great rebounding team out of this zone, even though they've got size back there. Bouncing it in to Pope. Almost lost it. Beautiful interior pass. McCarty, Anderson missing the way in. Second try, and Hill gets the grasp. Kentucky is good an interior passing team as you're going to see. Look at Anderson, as quick as he is. Yep, Petito helped them make the call. It was right in front of the Kentucky bench. A push off on Sims. Now, Sims, as I said, likes to use his body to keep the defender away. Anderson's staying right with him, and they called that a little push off. Kind of a touch. Probably the fact that Sims is so much heavier just knocked Anderson back. Jim Beheim wanting to work these officials a little bit. Wise move on his part. Antoine Walker back in. Anderson out. Obviously, he cannot afford the fouls. Walker on the baseline. He got the pass. Jimmy, that's the play against the 2-3. Get it in the center and operate. Sapova looked at the hole for a moment. They brought in Ron Mercer, freshman number 33 for Kentucky. And here's where Kentucky is very underrated. Their half-court defense is six. Too strong and Walker. Maybe a little bit too excited there. Didn't have a good touch on the shot. Mercer, who had the great game on Saturday and not many minutes played, but came in for important field goals. Yep, big minutes. Nine points for the freshman. Sepulva with the steal. Sims looks up for it, but no one there. Sepulva setting up. Got the feet planted. Three-pointer. Too long. 5-2 Kentucky. Four and a half into the game. Only a Wallace putback for the Orangemen so far. There's the spot that makes the zone adjust. Anytime they get the ball on the foul line, Syracuse has to make big adjustments. And Delk hits his second three-pointer. Bergen pass deflected, but Wallace able to get it across just in time. Hill in the paint. Sapola for two. Good passing by Syracuse. An excellent hesitation by Sapola. Sapola's biggest game, he had 25 here in the Meadowlands against Seton Hall, so he has to feel comfortable here. Delk travel. Now, Tony Delk loves that jump move. Didn't get away with it there. Jim, here is the hole where the opening is available. Now watch what's going to happen. Kentucky comes inside, and then they work outside, and Hill has to make the adjustment. Watch how Kentucky deploys. Man comes up in the open area. Good bounce pass. Too late for Syracuse to adjust. And I believe Kentucky will wear that out until the Syracuse zone 2-3 becomes a 2-1-2. J.B. Reef Snyder has come in for Syracuse, number 32, and Jeff Shepard on the ball right now for Kentucky, number 15. They double up Bergen. They got a two-on-one at this end. Sapola will challenge. Now we'll kick it back out. Sapola should have passed that ball as soon as he touched it. They had a nice two-on-one opportunity for a layup. Sapola takes the three. And Shepard. Bergen reached in, knocked it out. Kentucky ball. Kentucky 33 and 2 on the year. While Syracuse 29 and 8. Jim, one of the things Syracuse probably does as well as anybody because they're good overall team size is they'll throw the ball over the top of a press. They've been doing it pretty effectively, but not finishing on the other end. 
Anderson steps in. Shepard does as well. They keep trying to go inside out. Walker and Wallace with the long rebound. Sims broke early. Ahead to Bergen. What do they call it? They're going charge. Charge on Bergen. Now here is where fouls really can hurt Syracuse. It can make that bench so short. Good hit ahead. Bergen needed to stop. Shepard did a great job getting back on defense. McCarty in for Kentucky. Reef Snyder down in the hole now. Billy you saw it. They've already matched the number of turnovers they committed on Saturday against Mississippi State. Credit Kentucky for a lot of it. Mercer, two-pointer. Wallace, good hold of that rebound. Cipolla is a releasing early out of the 2-3 zone, meaning his area will not be very good for rebounding, but he may get an easy one. Wallace likes it at the top of the key. And he gives a walker a little stare, doesn't he? I guarantee you, he has developed that part of his game just beautifully this year. Just slashing on in there. And here comes the wave from the dazzling dozen. Pope, Epps, Delk. All back in for Kentucky. And it makes no difference, Jim, what alignment they put out there. Mercer thought he was still in there. It looks like they have six on the floor sometimes. I guarantee it'd be a good way to practice against them, the way they cover the court. Give it up. Oh, and Bergen battling on the boards. That's the one area where Syracuse does have depth, and that is with Hill and Reef Snyder. Yep. Now a sixth turnover for Syracuse. Epps with the numbers. They love them alone. Hope oh, he'll take a three. A little bit too low. This is Kentucky. They've got to get settling down in their half-court set. Will advise shot like that has very little offensive rebounding potential. Bergen three for the lead. Jim Bergen really had the big game against Mississippi State. Not only from the outside where he was six for 11, 19 points, seven rebounds, solid. Delt to get it back. Yes. Well, the player of the year in the SEC is pretty solid too, isn't he? Knocked down three threes already. There's the double. Delk with a two-on-one. Anderson back to the TD. Oh. Look at this passing. And one. <laughs> Jim, before this season started, Rick Pitino says, I know that I have the best players I've ever coached. I don't know if I have the best team I've ever coached. I think that's an example of how well he's coached players to become a team. Look at this beautiful handling back and forth. And that's the second on Sims player that... Syracuse cannot afford to lose. Well, Sims has got to understand and recognize that the trap is coming and get rid of that ball. He has a tendency to want to dribble through traps, and with Kentucky, that's almost impossible. So Anderson, after the great passing between Anderson and Delk, gives Kentucky the lead 14 to 10. Delk with nine already. We'll be right back. Well, this is an impossible ticket at the Meadowlands, but ironically, we have the two teams that went 1-2 in a total attendance figure this year, or average attendance. Kentucky won the title, Syracuse second. Here's that business of going over the top, but very dangerous with the quickness. Anderson picked it off, and he gets it right back from Epps. There it is, Jim, turning defense into offense by the same man. And this was always... The scary part, the last two days, everyone talked about it, with Syracuse cave in to this full-court pressure. This time they beat it. Oh, and up empty. Every dribble seems like an experience unto itself, doesn't it, against that press? Delk got it off the hip. And Reef 
Schneider foul by Anderson. That's Anderson's second, is that right? Yep. Number two. Of course, that doesn't bother Rick Pitino. He can look down there on that bench and slide somebody in. And here comes Mercer. Now, Mercer earned playing time last week. If you can see how Rick Pitino, with his professional background as a coach, knows how to split these minutes. I think that was invaluable experience he had with the Knickerbockers. And you also saw for Syracuse, Marius Yanoulis, number 42, come in, and Otis Hill has returned. Right there, 33. 33 Hill, that's Ron Mercer. Now, Rick Pitino, I was just watching him on the sidelines. He told Walker, be careful. They're going to try to throw the ball long because they're having so much problem getting the ball in on the end line. So Walker's back here patrolling. So they don't guard the inbound pass. Sims easily gets past the Wildcats that time. Cross court to Bergen. Yanulis can shoot it from the outside. Kentucky knows that, so they're playing him tight. Wallace drew the foul. Boy, he showed us a 25-foot jumper, and there he shows us the little jump stop for inside move. He has got a total ball game. Terrific job, and going up against McCarty, who is an excellent defender. McCarty's first. And Wallace. Eleven of his 21 points against Mississippi State came in that great drive in the last eight minutes. He's a money player. Hit the big shot, beat Kansas. Ten in overtime against Georgia. He's had some kind of tournament. And he has eight of Syracuse's 13. 16-13 Wildcats. Walker so quick to get the feet planted and turn around and pop it. The zone has so much trouble when that ball gets into that center area. How about this? Bergen being used as the primary ball handler, taking Sims out of there. Remember, Sims has those two fouls. Jim Beheim trying to make sure he's not getting the third foul on the offensive end. One of his two fouls was a push-off on the offensive end. And that's why Beheim did it. Nice subtle move. Look at that. Standing, firing, hitting, and heading to the line. And Jim Beheim working one end of the court. Rick Pitino, the others. Patino saying no, that call was too early, but he certainly was in the act of shooting. He faked out Kentucky with that pass, the fake pass to the corner. And Sims, so key to the success of Syracuse this year. 18-16 Kentucky. The young man had a triple-double this year against St. John's. Unlikely statistic, huh? It's only been done by four other players in Big East history. Good hustle by Sims. Well, if anybody wondered if the game Saturday was the JV game, so far, there has been no indication, has there? You know, Staying right with them. Yep. Sir, yeah. Syracuse had that happen to him in the regional when everybody was saying the Arizona-Kansas game was really for the championship. So they've been through it before. McCarty's in excellent position. Tell three. Finally missing from the outside. Epso gets his try. And that also off the mark. Syracuse doing a pretty good job on long shots, rebounding tight inside. Walker knocked that loose, and it ended up in Sims' hands. Hill. He can't find it. He hasn't scored. He's 0 for 3 tonight. Long goes in. Now, that, that, should have been, that should have been no basket, Jim. They kick it as a three. Because the ball was in the cylinder when Wallace had his hands on it. Three-point basket. That's the second one you and I have seen in the tournament. A yeah. pass that became a perfect shot. Darnell Burton of Cincinnati pulled it off in the regional. Mercer steps in. Syracuse has the ball and a one-point lead. This is a nice job by Syracuse to take the ball away from out of Sims' hands. Walker too tight on that one, whistled for it. Jim, we'll see it right here. See that ball he is touched in the it. cylinder. I think he touched it. Oh, though. no question about it. The ball is in the cylinder, and Wallace touches it. See, so that should not have been a basket. And definitely should not have been a three. See, he touches the ball while it's above, above in the cylinder, above the basket. 
You'll see it right here, without question, an illegal basket. And a three-point basket on top of it. Not like it was a two on an alley-oop. Hill really fighting for it. Can't get it to drop the loss. Just pounding inside. He didn't come to play. He's come to dominate tonight. And Syracuse leads 21-18. Danny Manning, Jim, bringing back any memories? Put a team on his back and carried him to a championship in a game that we never thought they could run with Oklahoma. And you first started saying that when Syracuse was out in the West. It's not something you just came up with here the last two days. He'll carry him. I'll take him right here. How about Put that? him on my shoulders. <laughs> and how about those shoulders? Wide, aren't they? And the, the meat hook down inside is making a pretty good impersonation of what happened. He'll try to draw the charge, no call. Now we're talking about Shepard was a starter last year in most of the ball games, so he comes off that bench with a lot of talent. Well, that pass is wild over the head of Yanulis. Well, this is something that Jim Beheim has to take the gamble on. Again, keeping that ball out of Sims' hands for a while. John Wallace has 10 points and four rebounds, and the Orangemen lead under eight. Syracuse holding Kentucky to 33% from the field and out rebounding the Wildcats 15 to 9. Jim, they're rebounding so strong down inside with Hill and now Wallace who's out of there. They were out rebounded 41 21 by Mississippi State. And Wallace getting a, a blow for a moment. Something you don't always see with Hill and Reese Snyder in the lineup at the same time. Usually they just alternate. Same spot. But they go uh, together here down low for the orange. Well, Wallace is going to get all of about 30 second break. Yep, just, a, just an extra well, a second or two. Nice piece of coaching by Jim Beheim using the timeout. Look at Hill surrounded. He traveled. And Wallace right back in. Hill has got to understand where that double team comes from and throw opposite. Kentucky converges so well on that, and they work on it day in, day out. Rick Pitino made a nice point, too, and we've watched them practice, talking about how they go against zones 15 to 20 minutes every day. He feels they're a pretty good zone team. It's been 50%, over 50% for the time it's coming in here, and Shepard throws it out of bounds. You know, that was not Shepard's fault. Walker actually should have been breaking to the basket. He stood still and just was a spectator. They go long. Yanulis, touchdown catch. But he spiked it in the end zone, so he'll bring it back out. Pope not as good a defender back there in center field as is Walker. He almost got by with it. Get Wallace on the carry of the load, now kicks it out. Shepard bumps into Bergen. And that's the seventh team foul on Kentucky. You see, Wallace is so strong down inside. They tried to double team him, and he just powered the ball through. Similar to what we saw at Cincinnati against Georgia Tech. Sapola in for Yanulis, and Epps has replaced Shepard. Bergen will shoot a one and one Really improved his free throw shooting on Saturday. He certainly did, Jim. He was having all kinds of problems in the tournament up to that point. He was 5 for 19 prior to Saturday in the NCAA tournament. <laughs> But made him when they counted against Mississippi State. Pope late coming to the middle. Not sure. Ball free. Pope. Jump ball. Jump Syracuse. ball, they say. Yep. The arrow with the orange. Syracuse getting some very valuable minutes out of Reef Snyder. Let's see how they work the pressure this time. Well, Sims back in there. He's probably going to let Bergen do it again so that they. Well, they got two on one down here. Wallace, pull up jumper. What a night he's off to. He really is, Jim. He was thinking about passing that ball. Rick Pitino wants a 20 second timeout. They are going right over the top of the press. 
Columbus has amassed more than half of the Syracuse total. He has 12. Jim, you can see they're going over the top of the press. Walker that time should have anticipated, particularly with Wallace down there, that they'd go to him. That was a long pass to be able to get by with as good as Kentucky is in the press. But they're not trying to put the ball on the floor with a dribble. They're going right over the top. Rick Pitino and his wife Joanne will celebrate their 20th anniversary on Wednesday. It's also the anniversary date when he was hired by Bayheim as a Syracuse assistant. And their wedding night was somewhat spoiled by Bayheim, who showed up at their honeymoon hotel in New York. Said, come on down to the lobby. I want to talk about hiring you here. They talked for two and a half hours. He got the job. First nice. three-pointer to tie it. A beautiful shot by Ron Mercer. Excellent follow-through. Question is, can Bayheim spoil the second biggest night of Patino's life? Wallace. He was backing up on that one. That wasn't his traditional shot. Good judgment by Epps trying to slow this thing down a little. Off Kentucky. 5.44 to go first half. Allen Edwards will come in for the first time into the Kentucky lineup out of Miami, Florida. Jim, you remember last year when Kentucky lost in the NCAA tournament? They played against North Carolina's 2-3 point zone. They only shot 28% that night from three, seven for 36. They're getting a little bit too frenetic in this game. Slow down, you know, you know they, they don't have to put it up so quickly. It, it really looks rushed right now. Yes, it is. It's a rushed on shots, rushed on judgment. Delk has missed his last four attempts after nailing his first three. This is a great move by Jim Beheim to get that ball out of Sims's hands some. Bergen's pass kicked by Delk, and that's a break. Because Delk had that ball smothered. He was all over Bergen. I'm anxious to see what happens when the ball goes down the low post to Hill and somebody starts to cut to the basket. If Hill will touch it and make a touch pass to the cutter, Syracuse is going to have a layup. Mercer out, Walker returns. Clear out for Bergen. Bounce pass, tough one. And Kentucky just knocked it out of bounds. Syracuse lucky to retain possession. That's a nice, smart move by Hill that time. He thought Bergen could take his man, so he cleared out for him, left an open space behind. Wallace pulls up again. Good block out by Polk. And that cost Wallace a foul. He has to be very careful here. Referees are not going to take that kind of a demonstration. Nice piece of officiating, and he goes by and tells Wallace, don't need any lip. That's his first, Billy. The other thing, nice piece of boxing out way far out from the goal. Oh, sure. I mean, was some 15 feet away, and he, and he had him boxed out. Wallace thus committed the foul. Oh, yeah, you block out away from the basket as well as down in the interior. Textbook there for Polk. And Edwards travel. His first time handling the ball tonight. Kentucky really out of sync in their half-court man-to-man. The half-court zone attack. Sims breaks long. Sapola comes up to take the inbounds pass. Wallace can handle it, but they'll dish it back to Bergen, who's carrying the load here since Sims picked up his second. Wallace trying to conserve some strength. I mean, down in the scoring area, too. You don't want him bringing the ball all the way up the court. You want him as the finisher. Bergen. And Syracuse back in front, 25-23. Jim, I said loose as a goose. Are they loose as a goose or not the Syracuse fight? Oh, Wallace tapped it against the backboard, the side, and it will be Kentucky ball. Well, Bergen had some game on Saturday, Billy. He really did. And what happened there is Epps is used to guarding a guard. Bergen is a forward. I think that Epps kind of relaxed a little bit, surprised at the explosive nature. And once he got down inside, Bergen too strong for him. Delp three, back on target. The equalizer. 
Bergen has to be careful with that dribble. Wildcats lead by one. Little hand check in here by Mercer. Walker stole it ahead to Mercer. Hill won't get there. Two mistakes that time by Sims. Trying to make too delicate a pass and then stood there as Mercer, who was guarding him, ran right by. And smart 20 here by Beheim because this is what Kentucky does. They seduce you into that frenetic play where suddenly in 30 seconds they've scored seven or eight points. Absolutely, get that run. Jim Beheim in his final, in his second final. He was there in 1987 against Indiana. Championship game in the Superdome. Syracuse and Indiana coming down to the final seconds. Keith Smart on the baseline over Trish for the winner. You know, they asked Beheim yesterday how many times he's gone back and looked at the tape of that game. Never says it's too painful. I remember Syracuse had a three-point lead. Howard Trish missed the back end of a one-and-one, one, could have made it four. All of those, that shot, those shots could have been ac academic. A little too close. That'll send Sims to the line, one and one. Shepard called for that one, and Shepard has two. There's a case where Sims is uh, kind of hard to, to figure out, Jim. He doesn't look fast, but there you had Shepard and Delp chasing him down the sideline, and he was able to stay right with him, and he's the one that was dribbling the ball. Shepard couldn't get out and head him off. Epps keeps shuttling in and out, and he returns. One and one. Tipped it out on the floor, and the arrow belongs to Kentucky. Well, they have a foul. Yeah, well, they got Wallace. You can't believe it. Normally, when that ball's on the floor and everybody's swarming, you can get some body contact. But I think in that particular case, John Wallace went right over the back. Now we've got the under four timeout. Kentucky on a spurt. And a three-point lead for the Wildcats. Kentucky on an 8-2 run, and Syracuse hurting itself at the free throw line, Billy, because the front end of the 1-1 one -on -one missed, and Wallace called for his second. Well, now we have Wallace and Hill, the two guys that are so critical down on the inside with two uh, in, in some foul trouble. You have Sims had the two fouls. And Jim, Syracuse, had they made those free throws, you know, they've got themselves not only points, but they don't commit those cheap fouls. Traveling call for Pope. Let's see if Syracuse Billy can go the last three and a half without Wallace or Sims picking up that damaging third. And also from a point standpoint, it's really critical for Syracuse to stay in the game. Make Kentucky go in at halftime knowing they have a ball game on their hands. Skip pass and Sapola tapped it over quickly to Sims. Just the kind of alert passing that usually results in an opportunity. But Kentucky intense here on the man-to-man. -man. Important for Hill to get a basket. He hasn't scored, Jim. He's 0 for 5. Bergen saved it. Wallace will take it over him. Three-pointer ties the game. 28. He's doing it inside, outside. And, Jim, that's where that cheap second foul could be so tough going down the wire. Kentucky trying to run a man into the middle. It's Pope. He's not as good a passer as is Walker. I'm surprised Walker's not on that foul line some. Wow, that's going to go, isn't yep, it? Yeah, it's going to go, and it's on Hill. So now you've got Sims with two, Wallace with two, and Hill doesn't get over there in time. Yeah, Mercer has some big-time moves, but so does this guy. John Wallace hitting the second three for the night. Beautiful square up. Wallace has 15. McCarty in for Kentucky. Jim, this young man was uh, maybe the best high school player in America last year. A lot of people thought that. Against Massachusetts the other night, 16 minutes, four for six, nine points. The game before that against Wake Forest, only six minutes, no points. So he's coming up big here in the final four. Hill wants some help. He'll go over the top. And Walker's there to intercept. 
the numbers for Kentucky. They got a man advantage. Delph three. Old Delph who with another one. Who would you rather have shooting it than Tony Delph? No one. He has five three-pointers, the most in a championship game, with Steve Alford was seven against Syracuse back in 87. And Delph with five already. 2.08 to go. There's the double. That's what I was talking about, Jim. And he'll hit the ball it. into the low post. The man will cut. He's wide open. And he'll finally gets a bucket to drop. Great recognition that time by Wallace. Delph caught, but Mercer safety valve. Yeah, that no look pass. Yeah, Mercer over the top for three. And Kentucky, Syracuse better be careful. Kentucky up seven with 1.38 to go in the first half. Delp, reach in. Uh, Jim, if people haven't seen Kentucky before, and it's hard to believe that they wouldn't with all the exposure they get, he was a starter in the first 12 games of the year. Average 21 minutes a game was Mercer. And then Rick Pitino came to the point and said, if we're going to win a national championship, the seniors are going to do it. Not Ron Mercer. He's our man for the future. Well, the future is now tonight. So one and one. The ninth team foul. They have blown the opportunities on the first two one-on-ones. And Bergen misfired on one. Of them. And this one. Syracuse foul shooting problems. The 70% free throw shooting team this year. Having problems tonight. Could have been six points at the line, missing Absolutely. three front ends. They'd be down one at this point. Good touch pass by McCarty. Sims on Epps, kicks it out, dealt for number six. Yes! Now that's 18 big ones. 40-30. Kentucky, you could feel the run coming. Syracuse just trying to get out of this half alive. Dunk steals it. Right back to Bergen, though. He's got to hit ahead to Sims. Hill for two. Oh, nasty fall. Hill head to the line, but a big thud here as Hill went up and slammed it home. Nothing intentional here. Not at all, Jim. And there's another sign of great sportsmanship that we're seeing in this tournament. Tony Delk. Look at Tony Delk with Hill. The kids in this tournament this year has exemplified sportsmanship like I've never seen before. Delk goes up. Hill defenseless because he's in the air. He has no place to go but straight down. But look at Tony Delk the whole time staying right with him. Great steal by Bergen. A huge turnover. Up 10. Kentucky with the ball. And now Syracuse at the line with a chance to get it down to 7. It could have been 12 or 13 at the other end. So he landed right on his tailbone. You're talking about a man with... That what 250 pounds coming straight down with no place to protect himself. There's a free throw finally. Reach Schneider, Yanulis in for Syracuse. 50 seconds to go in the half. Jim, we talked about the fact that Jimmy Beheim made the calculated gamble to take the ball out of Sims' hand, son, to rest him a little bit, make sure he doesn't pick up that third foul. But you sure want him to have the ball. Here comes that trap at half court. Epps breaks out of it to Edwards. On the baseline, Walker. Outside Bergen. Before the shot. Coming up, Pennzoil at the half. Pat Quinn, George, Coach K, and Coach Herrick. They'll have their first half analysis. Plus a look back at the 1963 Mississippi State team. It made history, breaking down barriers off the court. That's coming up, Pennzoil at the half. Okay, guys, here we go. Comes back in for McCarty. The double yeah. bonus. And one second, one eight-tenth second above uh, the shot clock, so Syracuse will have to give it up. I actually ruled that, Philly, in the act of shooting. Not the double one. bonus, so Walker with one more. 18 fouls on Syracuse. 41-33 Kentucky. This terrific run by Kentucky turned what seemed to be a low-scoring game into one where they changed the whole tempo of how the game is played. Reed Snyder oh, with a dangerous yeah. pass. Especially when it's under the opponent goal. Janoulis not a good ball handler either. Sims wants it. He called yep. for it. Good move. 
you feel so much more comfortable for Syracuse when Sims has the ball in his hands. Just a one second differential shot clock game clock. The Syracuse can run it down. They got the ball in the right hands. Ball is not this time. Yes. Breaks free. He'll launch it in time on the mark. But Kentucky with a run at the end of the half. They broke a 28-28 tie with a 14-5 run to close the first half. With the score, Kentucky 42, Syracuse 33. CBS Sports exclusive coverage of the NCAA Basketball Championship will continue after this message and a word from your local station. CBS Sports exclusive coverage of the NCAA National Championship game is sponsored by Mercedes-Benz. Nike. Celtic Pride. And by Mountain Dew. CBS Sports presents Pennzoil at the Half, sponsored by Pennzoil. For more engine miles, Pennzoil works like liquid ball bearings. Kentucky goes on a 14-5 run, and now we're up by nine at halftime, 42 to 33 out here in the Meadowlands. And hi again, everybody. I'm Pat O'Brien. Welcome to Pennzoil at the Half. I'm joined by Quinn Buckner and coaches Mike Krzyzewski and Jim Herrick. And gentlemen, nice to see you again. We've had our first April Fool's joke of the game, the John Wallace three-pointer that was really an alley-oop that was really nothing, right? It should have been nothing. When you look at the play, what you'll see is that, first of all, it's going to be a pass. But here's the issue. The foot, the right foot is on the three-point line. Now, secondarily, then there's a pass. And when the pass goes and it gets toward the basket, you cannot touch the basketball when it is in the cylinder. You see right there, John Wallace puts the ball in the basket with two hands. It's clearly in the basket. So there should have been no points for that. That was three points. The officials blew that call. But Mike, you, must, you would have gone crazy if that was you. Well, I'll tell you what. You feel like running out on the court. You want to throw up your hands. and. And uh, they, you feel like someone's stealing your car, and it's your national championship <laughs> game. Jim, what's been the difference in the game? Well, Tony Delk uh, came out really hot, Pat. He was, he was incredible, got 18 points. And unsung freshman, Ron Mercer, 11 points, averaging seven. On the other side, John Wallace doing a great job, 15 points. Otis Hill, where are you? Come on the second half, Otis. Coaching the game from up here, we like that. Coming up, we'll take a look back to see just how far we've come. The story of a basketball team in the American South of 1963 when Pennzoil at the half rolls on after this. Eighteen from Tony Delk to lead 42-33 at halftime. And uh, Billy Packer, let's go through the inside out, Coach's Edge. Well, I want to tell you, Tony Delk will slide to the outside. We're going to see a player come up and take the hole right here, McCarty. Epps will hit to the side. Ball goes into that area I've been talking about. It goes out to Delft. The zone cannot recover in time. Excellent ball movement against the zone by Kentucky. Out to Delft. And this is one of his six threes by the zone time. The zone gets there. Delk is in. Now watch the play unfold. There goes the pass. Here comes McCarty up to the middle. Zone collapses. He hits across and opposite. Delk wide open for the patented jumper and buries it. All right, chance now to go through your pregame points and see how they're sizing up. Your game analysis, Billy, first heat of the night. Oh, without question, Jim, look at this. Syracuse, 13 turnovers. UK with 15 points off of turnovers. Definitely a major factor in this game. And the Dazzling doesn't. The Dazzling doesn't. They just keep coming at you. Look at the difference. Kentucky, 13 points. Syracuse bench, nothing. 32 minutes to 12. The Dazzling Dozen comes there again. The Mead Hook. This was my Dimitri Hill. The University of Florida comparison with Otis Hill. Otis not filling up right there. Only two for seven. As Jim Herrick said, he has to come forward. Dimitri Hill had 29 and 10 against him. Loose as a goose, Jim Syracuse was. The score was 28 all with 254 to go. Then Kentucky went on a 14 to 5 run. And in doing so, maybe took some of that looseness away. 
what happened during that stretch, Billy, that 14 to 5 run? Well, I think a couple of things. Ball handling problems for Syracuse with Sims having those two fouls. Jimmy Beheim trying to keep the ball out of his hands. Syracuse really doesn't have that secondary rebounder. And when you try to go over the press, Kentucky is so quick in that back line that they pick them off. And their defense goes immediately to offense. And that's where they're so effective. All right, let's check out the first half numbers, Billy. Field goal percentage. Syracuse shot 50% from the field better than Kentucky in fact out rebounded them by two bench points as you pointed out Billy uh, an advantage that everyone expected anyway going in Kentucky 13 to nothing though pretty large difference Jim I think we have a little controversy out on the court right now I'm wondering if the floor is a leak on the floor and uh, the referees talking to the two coaches right now talking about an area down on what would be Syracuse shooting shooting in all right, Billy, we have more on that with Andrea Joyce. Andrea, what's the word? All right, well, Jim, as you know, it's been raining outside in the Ju New Jersey, New York area. Apparently, the roof is leaking out here at the arena, and it's leaking down right on the foul or right on the three-point line, and they've been wiping it up. They think that they still have a leak. They're just keeping their eye on it, and they'll wait and see what happens. Back to you guys. All right. Well, Jim, we talked about six guys. It seems like when you play Kentucky's press, we may have five players and somebody wiping up the floor. It really will be six guys out there. It was raining threes in the first half for Tony Delk, who had six of them for Kentucky. Six out of seven from three-point land. And there's that patented 2-3 zone still there. Epps trying to penetrate with the dribble. Jim, Kentucky this year, 32-0 when they lead at halftime. Delk missed a chippy, though. And Syracuse comes out of there with its first trip down the floor. Anderson on Sims. Look at where he put his hand, right in his face. Yeah, Sims slapped it out of the way. Sims got to be careful with that one. Look at that passing. Delt for number seven. Do we see in a Kentucky practice where Rick Pitino stretches that extra pass so that everybody knows where to rebound? Very effective. Hill's he got a wide open. In, yeah. He was in the lane for a while, but they reached around. Anderson is free under the basket. Dell from the other side. Back up, you can hear the slap. He'll head to the line. Walker did a good job blocking out on his end of the floor to get a wide open rebound. Hey, here's where I talked about the face guard. Watch this right here. Anderson puts his hand up there. Sims backs it away. That's the kind of thing an official wants to get them organized in a hurry. Third foul on Bergen of Syracuse. Bergen with three, Wallace two, Sims two. Jamal Mashburn's number, 24. Mashburn said he could be the best ever for Coach Patino. I hope he is. He is wearing my number. And Anderson saves it. Jim Mashburn, surprisingly, the only first-round draft choice that Patino's ever had at Kentucky. <laughs> you think about all their talent, that's, uh, that's quite a stat. And Wallace able to generate a call against Kentucky, against McCarty. And that's his second. There's Kentucky not guarding the man, taking the ball out of bounds. Syracuse likes to go right over the top, but again, it's going to be Bergen handling the ball. This has been a big move by Jim Beheim. Cipola wanted to go cross court, but Sims stood still. There was nobody to pass to. Almost two minutes into the second half, and no one has scored. 42-33 Kentucky. They're not hitting Hill when he's open. They're waiting, Jim. Well, that's a wild shot, but the rebound chased down by Wallace. Sapola for three. Not the shot they want. Syracuse has got to pound the ball down inside the hill to get him doing something. Because Kentucky's really playing tough on the perimeter now. Epps gives it up last minute and a traveling call. That allows, that little break right here allows Kentucky to get back in their full court pressure. And not 
starting the man taking the ball out of bounds allows Walker to be the safety man. Wallace puts it up for two. Boy, he is terrific, isn't he? Whether yeah, he, he didn't stops to, outside, yeah. leaned right underneath there. He's trying to be careful not to be called for a charge, so he backs off. Anderson back to the rim. Bergen with a good job on the board. Anderson bothering Sims by putting that hand up on him. Wallace again. Hill keeps it alive, but Anderson finally gets a hold of it. Numbers, Kentucky. Inside, McCormick. Good pass. I tell you, Antoine Walker doesn't pass like a man who's six foot and six eight. Now he makes excellent judgments, Jim, and he actually likes to have the ball outside on the perimeter. That was a four-on-one, four-on-two break. Well executed by Kentucky. You see it right here. There's Walker as you're talking about, Jim. Beautiful bounce pass. McCarty follows it right into the hands and puts it away. McCarty's first two. Reef Snyder in for Syracuse. Top pass. Pope just in. This might be a backcourt violation. It is. Hey, Jim, you can't throw a pass that soft against this press. Kentucky is quicker at, than is Syracuse. They'll run right underneath it and pick it off. 44-35 Kentucky. If you're going to throw it over the press, it's got to have a little bit of smoke on it. Reef Snyder, two-pointer. Just like Cipolla's shot. Not in the best interest. Mercer left alone. Oh, underneath, puts the spin on it. Well, he's putting the spin on how good a player he is, is what he's doing. Syracuse now with its largest deficit of the whole tournament. Wallace, though, quickly adds two and maybe three. And that's where the ball belongs for Syracuse if they're going to get back in the game. They've taken some ill-advised outside shots. Excellent bounce pass. Wallace spins. Even with a man as big as Pope goes right up against him and scores. Pope's first. They needed this. Wallace, second team All-American. The people who are watching him tonight for the first time probably said they wondered why. We talked about it Saturday. Three men in his league made first team All-American for the first time in the history of the All-American team. Allen Iverson, obviously, obviously the outstanding player from Georgetown, Kerry Kittles. And there's his mother, Vanessa, and who was reduced to tears when he called her two days before last summer's NBA draft and said, I'm going back to school to get the degree and set the example to my younger brothers. I will graduate in May. Carney should have passed that ball to Mercer. Bergen, he's open, got a screen for Reed Schneider. It's back in his hands, tipped to him. And Pope fouled him. Jim Bergen was a little upset with himself. You notice how his feet were twisted on that jump shot, and he really couldn't get himself reset to take it. McCarty collects his third Shepard enters for the Wildcats. Bergen. Jim, these foul shots so critical for Syracuse. It was the one thing that helped that run get started for Kentucky in the first half. Now he missed two front ends of a one-on-one to Bergen. And a chance now to hit two here. And his father Lamont shakes his head with pride. It was 11 for a moment, but Syracuse comes back to get within six. Back at the Meadowlands, workmen are up on the roof right now and upstairs working on the roof of the arena, and that is because there is a leak. It's raining outside. It's been raining all day long, and the water is dripping down onto the court. The leak has gotten worse in the last 10 or 15 minutes. It's leaking now in about three different places. They're just going to continue to mop it up whenever there's a dead ball until they get it fixed. Back to you guys. All right, Syracuse with a steal. Jim, it's amazing the difference of Pope in the middle as opposed to Walker. Pope, not a good passer, really couldn't deliver. Zapola stuck for a moment. 
Bergen on the drive. Nice move. Got the roll. Jim Bergen coming up big, just as he did against Mississippi State, where he had those 19 points, seven rebounds. And a huge second half. Mercer leans in. We had a freshman last year, Toby Bailey, who stepped up so big in the final. Look at that. Wide open. Wide open. Lays it in for two. What happened? Tony Delk got so interested in Wallace, he didn't realize the pull had slipped behind him. Hope for three. Walker slips to his hands. Now, Mercer really was the defender on that play against his own teammate. Well, it was an 11 point Kentucky lead just a moment ago. And Syracuse hadn't trailed by that many in the whole tournament. Off inside. And it says Bergen slams it home. Jim Bergen's given Kentucky's matchups a lot of problems. That time it was dealt that caught on a bigger man. 20 second timeout. Kentucky. We'll see it right here. The screen goes on Delk. Delk on Bergen. Although Tony is a good leaper, he can't help handle Bergen, who's got about three and a half inches on him. Great lob pass. Excellent eye contact on the play. Second time tonight. Of course, the first time, Sims got credit for a three. That was incredible timing, Billy, just watching it courtside, watching it develop. I thought Delk was on him, but the timing was just right. The pass was perfect, and Bergen reached up to grab it as if to say, I got it, knocks it down. You know, this game here at the Meadowlands is being played in the ball places, Bergen County. <laughs> and he may be the king of Bergen County if he keeps this up. Let's think of what Kentucky has not done lately. They have not gotten the ball at all to Tony Delk. Zapola on the foul, just the second team foul of the second half for Syracuse. And Tony Delk started off in that first half with a brilliant first half, 18 points. Kentucky has kind of forgotten about him. You know, Pope taking the outside shot. Oh, that's oh. Wallace on a touch. Is it Wallace or Sims? Either way, it's a big, big foul. Well, Wallace. It's on Wallace. You know, the three fouls they called on Wallace are all very questionable. Absolute touch foul. We'll see it here. John Wallace trying. Matter of fact, I'd have called the foul on Pope for an illegal screen. Yep. Gave it back to Mercer. There's a touch on Walker. And Bergen hands the ball over. Bergen playing really confident right now. Mercer, by the way, with 17 points. That's his high, and he ties his high in the year. Yeah, ties his Florida. career high. Yep. Wallace ahead to Sims. 50-46, Kentucky. You notice how Sims is becoming much more the ball handler now. Bergen leads in. Underneath, threatened to go along. Now he'll race up for it. Walker banks it in. Walker and Mercer have been outstanding in this second half. And there's that lob again. There's a hole. And two, two players, players down. down. It's Sims and Epps. And Sims is in great pain. Epps up. It looks like it's his wrist, Jim. Foul is going to be against Kentucky's Mercer. Sims wrist. Run right into each other. It's on the way down where he hurts it. Epps is up. He's okay. He's going to walk it off a little bit. Sims a little shaken to the Syracuse bench. You knew it was in. Jim, I wonder if C I mean, if Syracuse will go ahead and try maybe to deploy the getting the ball in bounds by stepping another man out of bounds when Kentucky does not guard the inbounds passer. They're trying to throw these little lobs, short lobs, and it's getting them into some serious trouble. That one was just waiting to be picked exactly. off. Exactly. It hadn't been a foul call. And what hurts on that, that puts uh, Kentucky in a position to have a nice three-on-one advantage on the offensive end if they pick it off. So with Sims out, 
And his wrist getting some treatment, massaging. Zapola brings it into the front court. Pretty nice job on Epps, but he didn't have to face the double team. Shaky ball handlers out there now for Syracuse. Wallace inside. He tried to force it, and Walker read it. Look at him. How agile is he? And Walker on the offensive class. Yanulis. 13 minutes to go. Six point. Kentucky lead. Very dangerous time for Syracuse right now. The team they have on the floor without Sims is in serious trouble. You see Wallace is tired. I really think Jim Beheim needs to go for a timeout. Hope underneath. Stuck. Walker's made steals the last two ends. Times on the defensive end. Heavy taping job taking place on Sims right now. Hope looks around and fires it. Hill out wrestles Kentucky for the rebound. Jim Wallace is just walking down the court, Jim. Maybe trying to wait on a TV timeout, but that can be dangerous with this shaky ball handling. Which comes in the first whistle under 12. Zapola, nowhere to go underneath. And off Syracuse. Near the conclusion of this game, Billy and I will select the genuine Chevrolet most valuable player of the game from each team. To date, Chevrolet has contributed almost five and a half million dollars to the scholarship funds of America's colleges and universities. Jim Sims has got a lot of tape on that wrist, and we don't know how uncomfortable it will feel to him when he tries to handle the ball. Well, we had a point guard last year in the championship game with a wrist sprain. He wasn't able to go after trying. Tyus Edney, UCLA, pulled out the win that night in Seattle. But there's no Cameron Dollar here to substitute for that position if you're Jim Beheim. That's the one position he has no help on. Uh, they'll get a chance to rest now. Delk stepped on the line. Kentucky shooting only 25% in the second half, but leading by six. CBS Sports exclusive coverage of the NCAA National Championship game is sponsored by Genuine Chevrolet. Pizza Hut. AT&T. And by Goodyear. Syracuse in pursuit of a first ever national championship. Kentucky in quest of a sixth national championship Billy Packer they've turned it over Syracuse the last four trips but still only down six not surprising though Sims on the bench we said that was a very shaky ball handling team out of there they might have dodged the bullet to get this time out as they are and Mercer having a super game but Jim one of the things that has happened here with Mercer coming up Kentucky has forgotten who number double zero is Delk is over four in the second half they ought to get him back to stroking at three Mercer, Mercer again he's everywhere Mercer from the corner three pointer and we talk about the dazzling dozen you never know which guy it's going to be coming off that bench a pass. Sims. That's five turnovers. Actually, six. They turn it over twice out of the break. Six in a row. Kentucky inside. Hope brings it out. Del on track. Maybe four. And who committed the foul? Is that Bergen? That's his third. Bergen on the foul. I said they ought to introduce him to number double zero. That's four on Bergen. Four on Bergen, yep. So you had Mercer from one side, Delk from the other. They're really picking up the offense. So, Tony Delk. Tony Delk with a chance for the four-point play. Timeout called by Syracuse. We'll be right back. Jim Nance, Billy Packer from New Jersey. Kentucky has run off 10 unanswered. And they have a chance to make it 11. Delk will head to the line. He has just tied the national championship game record with seven made threes, tying the record of Steve Alford, set in 1987, Indiana, against Syracuse. 
And Jim, for Syracuse, since Sims went down with that wrist and had to sit down, they turned the they have turned the ball over now six times in a row. Sims, of course, back, but we haven't seen him put the ball on the floor yet. 59-46, largest lead for Kentucky. Almost seven. Key stretch over the next two minutes for Syracuse. We said loose as a goose. Now they start to tighten up. Hill. All right, foul on Kentucky. Ball on Pope, his second. Isn't it amazing uh, with Rick Pacino and his substitution patterns, now that he's got Mercer going with a hot hand, back to that mentality of the NBA again, he keeps Anderson on the bench. So again, Kentucky has scored 11 unanswered. Lead by 13. And Ross, Hill underneath, and he waited. He got his room, and he slams it home. Just moved Pope out of the way, didn't he? Pope kicks it back out. Mercer. Shepard off his foot. Zapola on the spot. Syracuse with the break. Bergen. Beautiful hesitation by Bergen. Delk was there. Zapola almost turned over another one, Jim. Billy, it looks like that might not work out for him. And that was a three-on-one break. 59-50 Kentucky and Pope. Short. No quit in Syracuse, the same as Massachusetts last week. Big call there because Bergen had four fouls, and they call a block on Shepard. But Shepard never had position. Bergen put his head down like he was going through the line of scrimmage. Here we see Sapola. Now watch him almost turn this over. There he gets off his knee. Then a great job by Bergen on the finish. You can recover your own fumble, and that's exactly what that was. Nice soft layup there by Bergen. All right, let's see if Bergen can handle the one and one in the second half. Does this remind you a little bit, Jim, of that Massachusetts game where they would get behind and they try to make a run against Kentucky? It's not a good position to be in. Another missed one and one. Delt. Oh, Hill up high. Powerful rebound that time. Using that wide body to clean him out. Dribbling with that sore wrist. Oh, and slams it home. Sims with the assist, and he's shaking off the pain. Rick Patino won't go much longer before he thinks about a timeout. You know, McCarty's really limping out there. Anderson three-pointer big time 62 52 Kentucky and with Mercer's hot hand as I said Anderson sat for a while now he's back in there completely ready knocked out of bounds by the Wildcats this was a really courageous play really left working hand. that left hand and the pass with the left hand and of course he gets it to the man that can really finish in Wallace and was he grimacing when he came back down court Lazara Sims, who has six assists. Shepard has it come back in for Kentucky. Bergen, three-pointer. He hit the big one against Mississippi State, and that's one that answers Anderson's. Absolutely. When he squares those feet up, he looks awful good on that jump shot. He has 11 in the second half. The key in this game for Syracuse is to stay tight as long as possible. McCarty too strong. Anderson, two teammates battling. Should have been a walk. Shepard, three-pointer. Anderson way up. McCarty. Now a whistle. Traveling. McCarty, Wallace getting into a little bit there. Jim, I don't know what McCarty is really having problems on that ankle. I didn't see him twisted. But even on that jump shot, when he went up, he didn't seem natural. All right. More good sportsmanship, Billy. And nice piece of referee in two. Mercer in for Anderson, who gave him a nice minute and a half. 
Tony Delk back on the floor. 62-55, Wildcats 8-24 remaining. Five seconds, be careful. On the line. Mercer moving those feet defensively, and he used the sideline as the extra defender. Excellent technique. We see it right here. Sims going up. Mercer gets the feet over, you see, and there's no place to go. The sideline becomes his teammate. Excellent job. Barely touched it with the toe. Another turnover. Walker baseline. Walker. McCarty jumped twice, but Wallace got the rebound. Wallace, low drive. Look out. Blows by McCarty. McCarty is not physically in position to play him, and there's going to have to be a move by Patino. McCarty can't get it done out there tonight. Wallace goes right by McCarty. As I said, the ankle seems to be giving him trouble. John Wallace puts it away. They call it on Mercer for reaching in. John Wallace who said, you couldn't pay me enough money for what I'm experiencing coming to this Final Four. Turned away, chance to go into the NBA draft. First thought he was ready. Didn't sign with an agent, but he'll be back here at the Meadowlands June 26th. The NBA draft will be held right here, fittingly enough. And Wallace may have uh, another huge night on June 26th like he's having here. Can the freshman continue to stroke it with Delk? That may be the key for Kentucky. Talking about Mercer. Epps stuck, but finds Pope. Slips out. Bergen on the save. 13-point lead has now been sliced to four. Hill wants it inside. Off Wallace. John Wallace realized he's trying to do a little bit too much too quick. He points over to Hill, but it's his fault. He's thinking out there. Antoine Walker, McCarty out, Billy. Yeah, I, I think that he just can't get it done. He seems to be limping a little bit. It's not his night. press. Hill almost traveled. He did. He did travel. Can't say enough about Bergen tonight. What he's doing. Right back to Hill inside. And it just rolls off the front of the rim. Agonizingly close. Just couldn't get it up over Walker. There you see Pope setting the screen trying to get Mercer open. There's some body swinging in there now. Hill's exhausted, but he's throwing all of that 255 pounds around. 6.20 remaining. Six-point Kentucky lead. Absolutely critical, Jim, for Syracuse to keep this tight. Why? And see, exactly. That's the kind of shot that'll kill you. Sims fired it. Kentucky with the numbers. Delp, baseball oh. way short. case with Tony Delk, I think, got a piece of the arm, and it, but it did hit off of Hill's leg. He's saying, yeah, I got hit in the arm first. Kentucky ball. You see it right here. Watch Tony Delk come down. See, he gets him on the arm, and then the ball hits off of Hill's, Hill's leg, goes out of bounds. Kentucky's ball. deeper than it started out the game. See, they got the men out front are touching the foul line almost. Walker working hard, but it doesn't drop. Hill is doing something else on the boards down there, Billy. He is, and Reese Snyder was going to come in for him, Jim. Hill is just exhausted, but he won't give up at all, showing that same kind of moxie we saw Saturday in the kids from Massachusetts. Look at Wallace for him. 
himself. Down to four, 5.30 to go. Can they ever get Kentucky to start emotionally cracking? That is the key in an upset. Timeout, Kentucky. No one. Well, can't say no one, but almost everyone said this couldn't happen. They wouldn't be this close with five minutes remaining. 64-60, Kentucky and Syracuse battling for the national championship. Murray, 64-60, Kentucky leading. Second half, Syracuse over 50%. Turnover stats. Well, they obviously are working against Syracuse, but Jim, since that run of six straight turnovers, Syracuse has done much better with Sims back out on the floor, even with that wrist taped up. McCarty's back on the floor for Kentucky. Mercer leads the cleaner. That was one of those freshman mistakes. John Trying Wallace. to do too much. John Wallace has 27 points, 10 rebounds. Screening inside. Reef Snyder setting great screens inside. Wallace driving. And a foul on Pope. That puts Wallace to the line one and one. Terrific inside screening by Reef Snyder. Said Saturday, I almost think screen should be part of the stats. Terrific job on his part. Freed up Wallace. Billy, we got another one and one. Syracuse for the game is 0 for 4 in a one-on-one -on -one situation. I'm going to go back to a game that they played. There's a good one. Go back to a game they played at Providence this year where they had the great second half free throw shooting. This team, as I said, shooting right about 71% on the year. They beat Providence. They beat 19 straight in the second half. Kentucky led. 59-46 with 11 minutes to go. Since that time, 16 to 5 Syracuse. Kentucky has got to get Tony Delk going again. Only four points in the second half. There he is. Three pointer. McCarty, that's a huge tip in. Walker was on the sidelines. Was he coming in for McCarty or was he coming in for Polk? We'll find out in a minute. But McCarty had done a good job of boxing out and had position and a big putback so Paula drive much like Mercer's shot not the shot you want in this occasion we approach the four minute mark and a four point game Wildcats ahead Eric Anderson was wide open calling for it now he gets it Hooks it fires it hits a huge three they're going right to the center of that 2-3 zone and passing beautifully out of it. 69-62. Go, go, go! Without Hill in there, Reese Snyder not the offensive threat down low. They need another shooter. Twenty remaining. Five point Kentucky advantage. What a final it's been. Look at how well Kentucky has taken advantage of that 2 3 zone going inside. Epps too strong. McCarty to a teammate. Pope jumper. Good. McCarty out battle two Orangemen on the baseline. And it amounts to two more for the Wildcats. Second great offensive rebounding job by McCarty. The last one he put in himself. Beats all the pressure, and which way are we going? Charge! Anthony Epps stood his ground against the much larger foe. Now, Jim, I said if Syracuse could stay close, maybe they could get Kentucky to crack, but the opposite has been true. Kentucky guys have met every step of the way here and met that challenge in regard to emotions. Great job by Epps. John Wallace tried to go about 80 feet there, and that's very difficult to do against the club as well, skilled as uh, Kentucky. And that's four on Wallace. Bergen has been saddled with four for a while. Anderson. Epps inside. Walker to the line. Hill on the arm. 
that interior passing again by Kentucky. They're starting to really strip down this zone. Jim Bayam wants a 20-second timeout. Now Billy Syracuse had cut it to two. Now it's Kentucky seven and heading to the line. Kentucky's last championship, 1978. Kentucky and Duke played in the final. Billy, you were there. What a performance that night by Jack Gibbons. Jack Gibbons, who's sitting down to our left tonight. And look at the defense that was played by Duke, Jim. A 2-3 zone, and Jack Gibbons burned him. Incredible game by Jack Gibbons. 41 points on the night. Jim Nance and Billy Packer from the Meadowlands in New Jersey. The national championship game. The heavyweight Kentucky leading by seven against the Syracuse team that opened the year not even ranked in the top 25 and in some places not even the top 40. And here they are with 2.25 to go playing for the crown. Walker to shoot two. And at Kentucky. They're waiting to celebrate. This isn't over. No, no. Walker after three misses at the line. Gets that one to go to up the lead to eight. We're going to trouble. That's a good hit ahead by Wallace. Ten second clock was working against him. Bergen's done stellar work, though, having to be responsible for the backcourt tonight. Outstanding. Now this three, and Syracuse has to have it. 1.58 remaining, 72-67. Here was a guy in a slight slump coming into the Final Four. Having a career game. That might have been a walk. Kentucky wisely using a little clock here. How about Delk open in the corner? Bergen sees him. Seven on the shot clock. Delk comes in, gets it up. Hope lost it on the way up. One on the shot clock. Syracuse with a big hold that time. 120 remaining, down five. Don't need to think three here, Jim. Look at Delk. Sims gets it back. And Syracuse has the numbers. A pull with a reach in steal and a foul on Wallace. Sims tried to make the impossible pass. Is, is That's that it for Wallace. That's it. We can see the impossible pass. Pope gets his hand out there. The young man that transferred from the University of Washington, and then he hits it ahead. John Wallace walks by us in disgust. And Jim, remember the fouls early in the game, the three little touch fouls he picked up, how important they were. And after a spectacular senior season and a very powerful message that he sent to a lot of underclassmen, John Wallace has played his last game for Syracuse. He fouls out with 29 points and 10 rebounds. Now, Billy, there were a couple early. Didn't expect that to perhaps be a problem for Wallace by games in, but now with 106 remaining, Syracuse will have to go the rest of the way without its star. Well, they have a tendency when you get some of those cheap ones, it's so tough, but you can see his mom. His mother Vanessa. Yanulis replaces Wallace. That's the first game that Wallace has been disqualified with fouls this entire year. And now those people in Kentucky can really start to feel it. The great support they have for their basketball team and have had for so many years. Well, Polk first though, 17 fouls on Syracuse. As a critical one and one. Problem is, who will Syracuse have as its go to guy at the other end? Hope, who was a Rhodes Scholar candidate. 
and a former Pac-10 freshman of the year at the University of Washington. with a salute and Kentucky up seven with a minute four remaining change their press a little bit they're dropping back it's Anderson on Bergen you know who's the go-to guy it's got to be Bergen the ball dealt and dealt retrieves it Bergen is down with a cramp Jim He gets back up. Foul on Yanulis. Will still be one and one at the other end, but only 43 seconds remaining. And Kentucky with a seven point bulge. Jim, it was 1948 and 49 with the Fab Five. Then they came along with a fiddle in five in 58. All teams under eight off up in Joe Hall's great team in 78. Here they have a chance for another one. Delk, who was off the mark at the line Saturday, one and one. Just locking down that perimeter, that Kentucky defense. Sims way outside. Now, Kentucky ball. Epps has a cramp, but he doesn't want to come out of the game. He's been battling that leg cramp the whole second half. He does not want to come out of the game. We're talking about the high school athlete of the year. And he's not coming out. He's trying to sneak his way through to the very end of this ball game. And he's trying to hide so, yeah. that, so that the sideline doesn't see it. Here he is running. He can hardly run. Well, people have been saying since October 15th, the practice started, that Kentucky was the team to beat. They're 19 seconds away from claiming the crown. Epps does not want to come out of the game. He's trying to stay on the floor. He wants to be on the floor when and that final buzzer sounds. And when when they made the move to make Epps the point guard, Rick Pitino said we went from a good team to a great team. And Bergen has fouled out for Syracuse. What a sensational game this young man has played. 19 points, 8 rebounds for the sophomore from Detroit. So, Jim, Syracuse's third trip to the Final Four. Lost in 75. Actually lost in the consolation game, which they had at that time, to a ball club up, uh, out in, out in uh, San Diego. Lost both games out there. And lost the first one out there to Kentucky. Lost in the uh, in the semifinal. semifinals to Kentucky, right? One and one Shepherd. And lost to Louisville in overtime. Syracuse ball, only 16-9 remaining. And Rick Patino about to win the championship. They want no fouls here. Sims to Walker. Ahead to Shepard. Kentucky is the king of college basketball. 2.3 seconds remaining. And they're up. Nine. How sweet it is. Getting it back. Well, Rick Patino 
was born across the river in Manhattan. He said he grew up feeling profound loneliness. He was eight years younger than his closest sibling. He dreamt day and night of sports, almost in a fantasy league of my own. He's in a league of his own tonight. The Kentucky Wildcats are the 1996 national champions. And Ricky Pitino, how does that sound? It sounds unbelievable. You know, the UMass game was such a war for us. We knew this would be as well. Tony Dell came up like the All-American he is. We did a great job of penetrating the zone. We couldn't make the eight-foot shot. May, may we have an introduction? This is a first here on TV. Yeah, well, we, we untied her and brought her out for this game. <laughs> well, Jim Beheim, his team put up a great fight, but he wasn't going to spoil the night tonight for you, Joanne, Rick. Well, I'm going to tell you something. It's our 20th wedding anniversary this Wednesday, and we will celebrate. I haven't celebrated in three weeks, but I'm telling you, New York City's going to be painted tonight. <laughs> I want to ask you, we know about these seniors, and Tony did such an incredible job, and you said, this is the seniors. We have to wait for Ron for the future. What about this guy tonight? Well, he kept telling me for the last three weeks, he said, you don't have to wait for the future. I'm ready now, but he sure is big. <laughs> nice going, Ron. Congratulations. Well, let me ask Tony, guys. Tony Delk, you hit all of those threes. Was this game much tighter than you expected going in? Yes, it was. I thought they played extremely hard, but uh, without my teammates, this wouldn't have been possible. I mean, they was making the extra pass. They really looked good out there, and uh, Syracuse was a hard team, and uh, I'm, I'm just happy you came up with this victory. Rick, I, I know this is all about family for you. What would you like to say to your team off this championship? Well, you know what? We're like, a little bit like the Packers. We've been close all season long, unselfish since Italy, but the whole state owns this team, and we're so happy for Kentucky. You got some nets nice to cut down. Guys. Take them back tomorrow. <laughs> Rupp Arena, 7 o'clock. The celebration will continue. Kentucky, the national champions, and Pat O'Brien is coming up in just a moment. You worked so very hard all season for this one moment. They started the season at number one, and they finish at number one. And to certify it, let's go down to Frank Fallon, our PA announcer. Let's give him the trophy. Your attention, please. To present the championship awards tonight, here's the chairman of the NCAA Division I Men's Basketball Committee, Mr. Bob Fredericks. On behalf of the Division I Men's Basketball Committee, I'd like to congratulate both of these outstanding teams for their great play this evening and throughout the entire tournament. I'm now pleased to present the National Championship Trophy to Coach Rick Pitino and the University of Kentucky Wildcats. I'd like to, I'd like to just say a few words. First, we'd like to congratulate tremendous heart and guts by Syracuse University. And we're a little bit, we're a little bit like the Green Bay Packers. The entire state of Kentucky is our basketball team. Thank you all very much. Ladies and gentlemen, on behalf of the NCAA, we thank you for your support of NCAA basketball and wish you a good evening. piece of wood they call a trophy there could now become the number one tourist attraction all of Kentucky they can't wait to get that back down there haven't had one since 1978 as they sing their school songs we'll take a break and be back in a moment stay with us some of the fans down in Lexington will be celebrating I presume through the night 76 to 67 were the numbers a the reverse if you're a numerologist there in Kentucky as its national championship. Coming up tonight, your late local news, followed by the late show with David Letterman. That's next here on CBS. Well, our Chevrolet players of the game, John Wallace of Syracuse, 29 points and 10 rebounds, and Tony Delk of Kentucky had 24 points, tied an NCAA championship game record with seven three-point field goals. Steve Alford and Dave Seeger of Oklahoma uh, had the other ones. Now, fellas, you guys waited for a long time for your championship. What is Rick Pitino feeling right now? I want a great congratulations to Rick Pitino. If anybody knows how he feels, <laughs> Pat, it's me. And uh, 
Uh, it's a great feeling for him, and certainly a, a, a calmness will come over him and help him now. Do you just kind of just go, ha, huh, when it's over, and just, the, you know, the relief? Well, Pat, when I looked at Rick Pitino's face as he was accepting the trophy and then talking to the crowd, I saw fulfillment. I saw pride, and I saw a guy who did a great coaching job this year in taking the most talented team in the country to its well-deserved national championship. Well, you know when he walks out in the hallway, someone's going to say, can you repeat, right? You love that, <laughs> <Absolutely>. don't you? <laughs> Quinn, your take on the night, huh? You know, you look at Syracuse. This is a team that nobody thought would be here. And I mean, they played admirably. They played hard. They got carried. The turnovers caught them eventually. They played a team. I say it again. You talk about the fabulous five from Michigan. Nobody in the history of basketball has had 11, 12 players this good to play together. They're a very well-coached team, deservedly the national champions. By the way, Tony Delk has gotten his due. He's been named the most outstanding player of the entire tournament and well-deserved. He came up big uh, this time. We're going to have one shining moment uh, in a little bit here, but when we come back, we're going to hear from Jim Beheim right after this. Stay with us. Well, Pat Riley, who knows a thing about coaching in New York and knows a thing about Kentucky, once said there's no such thing as winning and losing. It's winning and misery. And so Kentucky goes on to a national championship, and Jim Beheim recorded this interview a short time ago with Andrea Joyce. Coach, you gave him a tough battle. How tough is it, though, to sustain a comeback when they keep coming at you with fresh legs? Well, you know, we knew that. We knew it would be tough, but I, I don't think that that was the key to the game. I just thought Kentucky made a couple great plays when they had to. I don't think we got, I mean, we were tired, but no more than usual. We played the same seven guys all year. Um, you know, we knew we were going to turn over a little bit, but Kentucky just made great plays. Delk's a great player, great senior. Uh, when we got down 13 or 14, most teams, Kentucky would have blown out at that stage. I'm just proud of my players. They weren't going to give up. They were going to come back, and we cut it to four. We had a, a good opportunity, but you have to give Kentucky credit. At that stage of the game, when we cut it to four, they made two great plays, and, and that was the ball game. But uh, my kids... Uh, have just had so much heart all year long and uh, in this tournament um, I think they uh, earned a little respect. How satisfying is this for you? You've had great teams in the past but to accomplish so much with this particular team when it wasn't expected. Well you know whenever you do something that's unexpected it's nice but I I'm just proud of the kids and, and feel bad because they gave everything they had and sometimes in sports that's not enough and uh, I think I to that's what I told them at halftime at, at the end of the game. It is enough when you give everything you had. Coach thanks so much. We appreciate it. That could be the story right there. One coach backstage, one coach on center stage. Cutting the nets down, Rick Patino. We come back, we'll have your shining moments. Welcome back to the Meadowlands. I'm Pat O'Brien with our esteemed panel here. And Rick Patino will be painting the town blue tonight, I assume, not red. But he did a great job, didn't he, Jim? To get all the players he had, Pat, to blend in together, he did a marvelous job, and I want to congratulate him. What are the next few days like for him now, Mike? You've been through this a few times. Uh, not much sleep, but you don't even want to. There's this constant smile on your face. It Go takes ahead. the player sometimes a little bit to understand what happened to him. But for the Kentucky Wildcats, this is their shining moment. Nice to see all you guys. How much pizza and ice cream do we eat last week? <laughs> a little too much. Well, we congratulate a Kentucky team and Coach Rick Patino who met all the preseason expectations, winning the school's first title in 18 years. As for Syracuse, you know what? If your kid came home from school and said, Mom, Dad, I came in second out of 64, you put them up on your shoulders. And as we say goodbye, we'd like to thank all the players, coaches, and schools, as well as the people behind the scenes who brought all the exciting sights and sounds of the games into your living room. And now for our final farewell to college basketball season, a look back at some of the shiny moments from this year's tournament. So long, everybody.
ball is tipped. There you are. You're running for your life. You're a shooting star. And all those years, no one knows just how hard you work. But now it shows that one shining moment you reach deep inside. In one shining moment, you knew you were alive. Feel the beat of your heart, feel the wind in your face. It's more than a contest, it's more than a race. Shining. 